My name is Željko Vlače, I'm coming from uh, Zagreb, Croatia, and my, my uh, organization is called Q-Sport. It's an uh, organization that deals with um, LGBTQ community development and is focused on sport and recreation, but we also do kind of cultural and political and media work, except for the sport. Uh, for example, uh, this year, uh, past year, in 2012, uh, we did a project with uh, Halter, uh, uh, the website that is kind of the central website for the civil society in, in, in Croatia, um, on critical writing uh, in sport. So we tried to approach uh, different people who had uh, critical opinions of sport, uh, but they, they, their voices or their positions would not be heard in, in mainstream media normally. And uh, something that is not usually covered by sport journalists or political activists who, who are doing kind of uh, critical uh, reporting or, or critical writing. Uh, yes, and, I mean, the history of uh, sport for, uh, let's say, uh, gay and lesbian community in, in the Western world started 30 years ago with gay games uh, organized in 1982 in uh, San Francisco. And uh, for uh, countries like US, Canada, or Western European countries. This has been a long history of, of uh, development and, and kind of emancipation in the field of sport. Uh, in Europe, there have been activities and organizations for, I would say, 20 years. Uh, but they, they were mostly located in, in uh, Netherlands, in Germany, UK, France, and relatively recently in South and, and Eastern Europe. Uh, however, in, in, in our particular region, in, in uh, let's say Western Balkans or Southeast Europe, um, we had maybe a, a different situation where doing sport as LGBT person uh, is still very much a political uh, uh, act. Uh, is, is, is something that uh, builds a, a particular type of tension and, and particular type of kind of um, social um, relations in between uh, the public, the, the community and individuals. Uh, something that is kind of uh, already a past in, in Western Europe. So um, our uh, let's say partner organizations in the West have emancipated, have been established and have mainstreamed in past 20 years. So for them uh, it's a normal for uh, people who are doing recreational sport that they organize a gay or lesbian club and they take part in uh, regular leagues or they organize their own tournaments. Um, in, in Western Balkans, um, it's uh, a really an exceptional situation where uh, minority groups, and I'm not uh, thinking only of gays and lesbians, but in general that minority groups organize in a way that they are visible in field as, as a sport, uh, because it's it's very contestant field, very um, politically charged, uh, there is a lot of uh, media and, and kind of financial pressure, especially in, in sports like uh, football, uh, which is not really open for minorities, which is really, um, I would say, more often used to, uh, to, to support uh, right-wing or, or, or nationalistic uh, tensions and, and to be uh, exploited in a, economic terms, then that it's uh, welcoming and supportive of, of minorities. So our work was focusing in past eight years mostly in uh, trying to get individuals to, to self-organize, to uh, learn about their options to, to uh, 
kind of uh, exist as, as a, an exception within a, a system that is, um, let's say, heteronormative, uh, but also to, to kind of develop strategies of how to uh, build parallel systems. So to do our own tournaments, to do our own networks, uh, to create alliances with organizations that are not necessarily in sport. So, for example, uh, we are partnering with, with organizations like Center for Peace Studies, with uh, White Angels, who are the leftist uh, fans of, of uh, football club Zagreb, with uh, anti-fascist youth, with Heinrich Boll Stiftung. Um, so... The fact that we are more political comes from the environment in which we are in, and also our work then becomes uh, uh, also about emancipating as a group and, and supporting kind of personal growth of individuals in the group. Because we are not exclusively political organizations and we are not kind of seen as political but more as a social activism. Uh, then uh, people who are intimidated of being totally out uh, approach us and have this kind of a gray zone in which they uh, get more relaxed and more comfortable in, in kind of safe space. But they also get a little bit of taste of freedom. They get a little bit of taste of what it means to be involved with civil society, uh, what are the allies they can count on. Um, like many people uh, who joined our group never previously took part in any civil society organizations. They didn't know about like alternative culture and then like organizations that take part uh, like in a very supportive way in, in, in events like Pride or, or uh, other protests or, or something like this. So um, it, it's like uh, giving a chance for people to... to uh, gain access to, to a whole new sphere of, of society that is not kind of uh, part of the, of the mainstream uh, visible media, mainstream visible uh, institutions, and uh, doing it in a way where they don't feel pressure that they necessarily have to commit to uh, activism, especially not kind of uh, uh, professional uh, kind of... Uh, uh, partisan or, or, or kind of strongly committed work. Uh, but during this period, of course, some people have uh, become so open that they joined also other initiatives like uh, Zagreb Pride or uh, LGBT uh, parents uh, groups and, and these kind of uh, organizations or even uh, green activists and such. I mean, uh, what has happened in the West... Uh, and I think primarily of Northern uh, uh, America, of, of US and Canada, and, and Western Europe, is that um, organizations that started 30 or 20 years ago, like us, have scaled up and have uh, built a kind of parallel system of recreational sport that is more specific uh, and, and more focused on gays. Uh, I would say these days uh, LGBT, is, but uh, it, it started f firstly as gay and lesbian, I think. Uh, and at their scale, where they have 1,000 members, where they can uh, kind of allocate more resources, they can actually replicate some of the system. They can do uh, events that are like uh, a European championship in particular sports or even world games that have size of six, 7,000 participants and remain inclusive for other minorities or, or even who, for, for uh, people who, who, uh, who, who personally uh, consider themselves as uh, straight allies um, to, to, to these groups. Uh, but this is something that we don't have as, a, as an option. For us, um, the, the option is, is now only to, to start working towards uh, uh, the mainstream and to, to kind of get acknowledgement uh, uh, in, in the existing leagues, in existing uh, competitions, um, and also to, to kind of show that our practice uh, of, of doing sport in a social way uh, also can benefit, uh, uh, can, can be interesting and can... can kind of give some benefits to the existing sports system. Like, 
the, the volunteerism that is developed in this, in, in this community where members are relatively tight is something that doesn't really exist in, 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 in other uh, mainstream sports, at least not as a rule. Like most of the sports, especially in, in former Yugoslavia, the systems of sport for, for recreational people basically collapsed. They either uh, professionalized to be like super commercial uh, wannabe successful businesses or they failed that they no longer exist and they maybe survive uh, by a little bit of subsidies locally. But um, like if you are a woman and you, you left university, you are maybe 25 and play sports, uh, it's, it's very hard for you if you are not professional to, to, to do anything. Like you can do aerobics or yoga, but if you want to play handball or, or, or football, it's very, very hard. And this is some kind of um, um, a collapse of, of that is more systematic, that's not related only to a particular minority, but it's kind of the economic uh, situation combined with kind of absence of political will to, to, to kind of sustain something as, as like a common um, a good, something that, is, uh, that should be participatory and open. And we are basically trying to do work in direction that people learn how to self-organize, how to uh, emancipate also within sports. I think uh, uh, the fact that we have like one quarter of members who are straight uh, and, and they are not just uh, any members but also key members like coordinators of activities shows the fact that there is absence of these kind of initiatives uh, in, in a kind of mainstream uh, sport. I mean, different things in terms of um, uh, approaching specifically sport uh, field. Uh, it's relatively conventional uh, kind of one-to-one uh, -one, uh, communication because most of our uh, sport system is, is uh, still very late in adopting new technologies. Like very few clubs uh, have really live websites and really have uh, integration with social media. If they do have something, it's usually the PR that is just being outputted to the outside, but it's not interactive. Uh, if you look at what are the policies in between how clubs uh, uh, relate to fans, you can see that it's basically consumer uh, relations as if they are just consumers. So they only get access to uh, buying you know, promotional material, buying tickets, uh, cheering, but they never really take ownership or, or kind of take part in, in, in governance of, of sport. And this is something that's uh, very recently discussed in, in media. Um, for example, in Germany, there are many cases that fans are actually owners of the clubs. Uh, in, in UK also. Uh, in, in Eastern Europe, uh, this kind of situation happens only after the financial collapse of club happens. So there is no one to take over and then the fans uh, organize something to, 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 to kind of uh, support the club to, to, to remain active. But systematically, uh, clubs are pushed to be commercial, and if they cannot sustain uh, this uh, on their own, they, they just live from what they have as a state subsidy. So there is no like incentive to interact with, with society. There is no incentive to promote any kind of social values. It's, it's just basically a pure economy of like what is efficient, uh, sponsorship or, or PR relations. I mean, it, it's very hard to generalize. Uh, what happened in the UK in, in regards to football was that uh, basically 20 years ago, they started making systematic changes about um, uh, kind of football culture, and they invested a lot of resources to, to, to change this, uh, to have uh, less fans violence and to have uh, positive campaigns. In past 10 years, uh, there have been attempts to, to support uh, minorities, and it was primarily uh, fighting racism. 
and uh, there was uh, an informal network, uh, Football Against Racism in Europe, that came as a grassroots initiative from, from many uh, countries where, where these activities were happening, from many organizations, that kind of organized to the level of being a an, an formal organization that is now partly even integrated in programs of UEFA. So there is some structural support. Uh, but, for example, when this organization shifted its focus to include uh, other minorities, so not only based on racial discrimination, but also based on uh, sexual orientation and gender identity, uh, th this was much harder. Uh, I think the, what, what people um, who uh, are part of the system of, of football, which is probably the most uh, kind of wealthy and in the same time corrupt sport uh, feel is that they have to support something for the political correctness. So there are some funds, there are some spaces where this can be advertised. Uh, they even have some systems how to uh, uh, kind of um, uh, punish those who, who uh, are explicitly and specifically uh, making homophobic statements. But uh, they do this with huge delay, they do, do this away from public, they do this, uh, these uh, uh, fines in a way, for example, that uh, Croatian coaches Otto Baric uh, and, and uh, uh, Zdravko Mamic and, and uh, uh, Ma, uh, Markovic, uh, they, uh, Vladko Markovic, they were all uh, making these claims and they were all uh, sued f for these claims, but it was always uh, very late. It was always that the money was paid by the sport federation, not by them personally. So it's a kind of a, a big compromise of what actually happens in the field. Like there is some intent to improve, but it's not enough that people would feel supportive. For example, in uh, Germany there was this famous case recently that uh, uh, Bundeszentrale for Politische Bildung uh, uh, has a magazine called Flutter that published an interview with closeted uh, gay Bundesliga player and uh, everyone was appalled that uh, it's such a kind of uh, hard situation for someone who, who plays in Bundesliga in Germany in a country where LGBT rights are so supported uh, that he cannot even be uh, out uh, to, the, uh, to, to the media or, or to, to anyone. So for example Angela Merkel made claims that he should feel free and that he would get support. But this is the kind of support that is very much uh, uh, kind of personal intent in, in goodwill, but it's not systematically implemented in any way. So even if the person comes out, uh, who is going to guarantee that his losing of sponsors that happened historically with Martina Navratilova and with other uh, individual players will not uh, kind of diminish uh, the chances of this athlete to progress? Like in US there was a, a football player uh, David Tiesto, who, who was the first professional football player in the US who came out. And as soon as he injured himself, and he was kind of a very high-level uh, player, like he, he could have been part of the national team almost, um, he stopped getting contracts. He just like, didn't get the next contract, and he had to retire at the age of 25 or something. And recently there has been another player who retired before reaching even 25. So it, it's kind of a symptom that it's not enough to have support uh, in, in kind of verbal way, but there needs to be like systematic change of climate in, in this, in this uh, field. And unfortunately for our region, things are much worse because this is not only homophobia or this is not only transphobia or particular minority issue, but it's, it's a greater issue of, of corruption, mismanagement, and kind of political abuse of, of uh, using fans as, as a kind of agents of uh, particular politics. Uh, well, f uh, I, I kind of started my uh, 
work as an activist uh, coming from arts in, in, in digital arts and media culture in, 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 uh, uh, with the work in Multimedia Institute where I was one of the people who uh, co-founded the institute and work in promotion of open source and, and uh, uh, open standards and this was late 90s, early 2000s and and uh, this kind of media activism kind of uh, affected uh, also my personal uh, kind of ability to use tools and, and uh, personal interests to see things outside of particular topic. So, uh, yeah, my focus, of course, was shifting in different ways, but uh, as an individual, I'm, I'm supportive of other struggles. And, and for example... Uh, Multimedia Institute has, has uh, been focusing in past years together with other organizations uh, on the topic of, of public space. And this has been uh, articulated through a new organization, Pravo na Grad, that basically c came out of this cluster of organizations who were very much critical to the urban management uh, politics in Zagreb, but it also expanded to, to other uh, cities and is now being... Uh, very much uh, strengthen and, and kind of uh, uh, elevated to the new level of, of uh, activities in Dubrovnik, where, where public space uh, uh, is, 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 uh, has become an issue not only in kind of changing of, of uh, priorities of, of uh, urban city core, but also commercializing the, the common ground, uh, which was... Uh, 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 which was started by this kind of fake plan of, of the state of Croatia to support golf building of golf courts. Uh, and I, I'm kind of happy to say that uh, there is a lot of uh, solidarity in between different groups uh, that work in, in activism at the moment and in Croatia. So there is a lot of feminist groups, a lot of green groups, a lot of... Uh, LGBT rights groups who also come to these uh, protests, who also take part in campaigns, and uh, some of the, the most prominent, uh, for example, cycling uh, syndicate that uh, got established, uh, I think, two years ago as an organization, ju now just formed a party for the next elections in Zagreb. So there has been huge development in, in articulation of positions, but also in developing, producing this kind of solidarity in between different struggles. Uh, maybe the biggest change uh, in terms of uh, this kind of solidarity is, is really explicit when it comes to uh, protest uh, of, of Pravo na Grad and, and Zagreb Pride. Because, for example, Zagreb Pride uh, started as... as uh, initiative of few gay organizations, gay and lesbian organization Iskorak Contra and Multimedia Institute was the support was the supporter and this was for 10 years a struggle of maybe 20-30 people doing an event for maybe 200-300 protesters and only 10 years later it scaled up to 2-3 thousand. So it took a really long time for, for people to mobilize. It, look, it took a really specific event, the, the kind of failure or violence on split pride that, that made uh, people who were straight allies to come out together with, with uh, LGBT uh, population to the pride. And I think now uh, there is a kind of stronger... Uh, support and stronger sol solidarity in between groups than ever before. I think it's the biggest problem is, is production of solidarity. Like unless you have really uh, a, a kind of a, a massive uh, solidarity in between groups who don't uh, take on the same issues at the same time, but are able to mobilize uh, at critical points for each other and, and for, for more general topics. This is where, where the critical uh, uh, point turns in direction of like uh, critical mass and, and upscaling and, and getting a notice on, on a totally different scale. Like I, I cannot imagine uh, anymore that someone would be like super involved in, in one of the uh, uh, activist groups nowadays and not to show up on, on these demonstrations like 
uh, if, if that is an option. So it, it's kind of a, a matter of both uh, uh, decency and courtesy to kind of to, to support each other. And uh, there is also better understanding. There have been uh, platforms like, for example, Zelena Academia that was done by Heinrich Bohl Stiftung in Zagreb <clears throat> is something that evolved uh, f from uh, kind of a particular uh, focus of green politics, which is kind of in, in Croatia never really only about uh, uh, green uh, issues, because green politics in Croatia never really emancipated itself through a, any specific green party. They were all, always fragmented and small. But uh, the event itself created uh, a kind of a circle of, of, of uh, people who are better informed, uh, who, who better understand each other's issues. And uh, now having this kind of alliances helps uh, upscale uh, all, all, all the public kind of efforts, all the public actions in a totally different way. Um, I, I know from our members that uh, what they formally used to look at uh, as only a particular issue of their own need to be kind of safe in public space as, as, a, as a gay person, now it's not enough. Now they also think about if I'm safe as a gay in a public space, uh, I also want to care about public space and I also want to care about safety of other minorities and uh, maybe uh, I don't know uh, all the issues about it but I'm interested to find out and I'm interested to support so there is um, much more uh, kind of uh, cur curiosity and much more uh, empathy that that previously was kind of only present with, with like the most uh, a professional uh, uh, or, or, or the most engaged uh, activists, now it, it becomes kind of overwhelming, let's say, atmosphere that, that people just feel this is worth supporting.